Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. I'm covering off today Lord Feltheus and the Tainted Cohort, how I've painted them up from my Death Guard, uh, my thoughts on the unit in general. You can see here the finished effect, and they are some fantastic models, and I've just painted them up in a similar way to the rest of my Death Guard. Um, there are no rules for this unit in 9th edition 40k, you know, there's no data slate for this particular set, but I think it's a brilliant way of getting yourself a Lord of Contagion, which is what Feltheus will work as, and expanding your Blight Lord Terminator unit. So I've already got a full Blight Lord Terminator unit squad. I made a unit of seven. You can see here, this is one kit bashed out of a Death Shroud. I used one of the Death Shroud models that you get in that set to make my Demon Prince. The other ones I converted up and put in with my Blight Lord Terminator. So I've got a unit of seven, which is, you know, the number of Nurgle, um, all the sevens is what we're after. I'm bulking the unit up to a full stress squad of 10, because in my mind, seven best number, 10 next best, because that's that full unit strength. You can see here the original models that I've done, and I'm gonna paint these up to match and blend in well with these, which they will do. Now to order these, they're not a set that comes in the normal fancy you know, workshop packaging. You can order them direct, or you can get them from your friendly local gaming store. Not a bad value kit, actually. 26 quid at full retail, which considering you're gonna get a lot of contagion out of it, and um, the other Terminators, works out cheaper than the normal squads. You could get two sets if you want, then you'd end up with seven Terminators and a Lord, but you'd have some repetition of models, but would be perfectly doable. So lovely models, and that's kind of why I'm adding them into my unit. Now, I'm not doing any kind of fancy builds here, no real wicked wild conversions, apart from Onfeltius himself, which we'll cover off in a minute, because I don't know what your thoughts are, but I really don't like Feltheus's face. I just think it's a very, very strange part of that model really easy conversion it's kind of bounced onto a little frame that you mount in and i've just taken one of the heads from the limited edition uh, heroes plague marines that i bought as my first death guard unit back in whenever it was end of 2020 and you'll know from my death guard i've been adding to these gradually over the course of the last year or so um and i'm really bulking them up at the moment because i'm doing a big 10,000 point game uh, which is going to be sort of back end of june with a couple of mates so um, you know, they're expanding a little bit more rapidly. So a nice build, nice and easy, just dropping the uh, replacement head into the torso of Feltheus, uh, no wild and wacky conversions. Now, if you've watched my channel for a while, you'll know that I'm experimenting with an airbrush to do uh, some undercoating, but I didn't do that with these. I've got a can of old army green spray, so I started off with that, which works for the Death Guard, and you can see little bits of green showing through underneath, and then I've done Retributor Armour over the top. A lot of brass armour and stuff on the Death Guard, so really useful to save some time, and it gives a nice aged effect. Now, I'm just laying down basic paints here. So this is just an undercoat of the normal Death Guard green. I will put all the colours down in the description down below, so you can check that out if you want to, as well as some links to other videos you might find useful and some hobby stuff. So really laying that Death Guard green down. Now, I'm not being super precise. As you see, there's bits showing through, which is fine, because it makes the armour look battered and old and, uh, you know, smashed up. Now we're working on the bone protuberances. Um, so there's lots of spikes and spines growing out of these guys. So literally just laying down a basic bone colour onto them. One thing to bear in mind, when you're painting some of the larger bone spurs, it can be really useful to make sure you're pulling your brush in the direction that that bone kind of grows, because then your brush marks will all be in full length, and it adds a little bit of graining to it, um, which might get covered by a wash-up stroke later, but laying that down in that way, just it certainly can help. Now, a lot of these models are covered in tentacles and, you know, growths coming out. So what I'm doing first is laying down a nice pallid flesh colour on all the tentacles, first on every single one, let it dry, it doesn't matter, and then we'll do some wet blending in a second to pull those tentacles kind of together. Now they are all over the place. There is a quicker way of doing these, you could just do the tentacles exactly like this, and then just do some sort of, you know, purpley or red ink wash over the top, and they'd look really nice, but I fancied, you know, messing about an experiment with a little bit of wet blending, making these tentacles in sort of a couple of different colours, so we'll work on this as we go. Now you could do each tentacle one by one by one, put on this pallid flesh colour, and then do this wet blending effect we're looking at in a second. But I find it just as quick, really, to be honest, to go around and lay the pale base coat on first, and then go to the effect we're gonna look at in a second. So, um, you know, but it's up to yourself. So I've gone around all the model and done that. I'm halfway through doing the blending effect here, and we'll show you on a large tentacle. So you can see, I'm now dropping on the, the pink color, or the dark red color, on the top. Now, we're laying that color on, and we're working with it when it's still wet. You can see, I've showing you the palette in the background so you can see the colours I'm working from. So we're dropping on that red, putting it on uh, relatively uh, watery because it's on a wet palette so it's watered out anyway. Getting the red mostly out of the brush and then going in to the original colour that we've put on the tentacle, dropping it on to that wet area where the red is and dragging it down to the paler area of the tentacle. And it will make your red at the very top a sort of darker pink and a lighter pink as you move down the tentacle. Now, 
how much of this you want, um, it's entirely to yourself. The more of the light colour you put into this red now, the pinker and fa fainter it'll become. You might want to drag this pink effect right down to the base of the tentacle, or you might want to have it, you know, just at the very top. So really that's up to you and you can play. You can see here I'm dropping some of the red right near the actual armour, so it'll pull some of the pink further down. But then I've dropped a bit of white on and cover a bit up, and it really is just playing here. You've got a bit of time while the paint is wet on the tentacle to do this, and that is literally wet blending in 10 seconds. Um, you know, I'm not making it super precise and super neat and tidy at this stage. It's relatively clean and tidy, um, but just clean enough. And when we do an ink wash later, it will tone it down again, and then we'll work on it again. So, um, but that's it. That's that's my wet blending technique in in 20 seconds, uh, and just play until you're happy with it. Now the other thing to do uh, on these is. You see they've got a lot of push jewels and boils and things all over the model. Um, so now I've done this wet blending technique on there, the thing to make the tentacles kind of really pop is to take the red purely on itself and drop that onto the areas of the tentacle that it's going to contrast well with. So the lighter pink areas or the areas where you've left a sort of pale pallid flesh colour and that really makes those sort of boils and push jewels stand out. And then you can take the uh, pale flesh colour that you've used and drop that onto the darker pink or the red areas. And that really makes those kind of pustules and things pop uh, down that kind of tentacle piece. So you can see there, and there's a lot of these on this model. That part of this paint job probably took a lot longer than any other part because that one particular model is covered in tentacles. So now moving on back to a sort of normal base coat stage. This is just a nice uh, dark brown leathery colour. And there's a lot of leather kind of straps and things on there because they have a very sort of Romanesque style um, to some of the equipment on there. So all the straps and pouches you're going around. Also thinking about putting it onto the wood areas. There's only a couple of areas of wood just on the handles of the axes that a couple of them have got, but that can really kind of work um, quite nicely. You can use a couple of different browns if you want. I just went for one. Now, tying in purple, you saw the original um, Blight Lords that I've done, and I've done purple on the cloth. Now, I put purple on the face that I've used for Felthius, so kind of like a hood that's over him with the mask coming out. Now, this was a mistake. This is the one part of the build that I think I wish I'd done differently. Um, it hasn't ruined the model or anything, but I wish I'd gone just for a, a brown into there instead of that purple. So you'll see later, it doesn't quite mesh as I might like it to. Now, the weaponry, these are obviously demonic kind of weapons. So it's dropping some black onto the faces of all the axes and the swords. I think it works quite well for making them look kind of demonic and, uh, and sort of evil, um, and also doing some pipes and tubes of that as well. Now I am going back over with a, a metal color, like a bulk of metal style color, using it on all these kind of orbs where all the gases and also the plague stuff comes out of, and also picking it onto some of the speaker grills that are built into the armor and the chain mail nose. You could do more or less, it's entirely up to yourself. And this here is just showing you the value of a wet palette. Just pulling it into shot here because I got to Felthius and went, oh, I didn't do the black cables running into his speaker grill. So I decided to dig uh, the black back out and just go back a stage and drop that paint back on there. That's why it's really useful sometimes having that wet palette because you can fix mistakes that you spot as you go. If you're on a normal palette, you probably forget that. I will probably do a video on how to make a wet palette if anyone's interested. Keep thinking about doing that. So if you are interested, drop a comment down below. Now, Lots of these models are covered in, obviously, where all the bile and things is leaking out. So I've just painted that yellow, and you'll see why later on we do the next effect. Drop some of that yellow as well into the smoke areas where it's coming through, and then I'm putting a bit of grey on the rest of that smoke, not being super detailed. Now, really, that's it. We're just on to final details before we're going to the wash stage. So dropping a little bit of blue into the eyes of one of the models. A um, couple of models, it's like the red eye vents and things, but blue onto one, red eye vents onto a couple of others, and that's it. When it's thoroughly dry, it's a nice wash stage. Now, I've said many, many times, my favorite wash is the Vallejo Game Wash. It's a sepia wash, comes in a big pot, nice and cheap, uh, but any kind of sepia shaded wash will do. You don't want to use a red pinky wash like Reichland Flesh Shade or anything like that, because it'll make them all a bit pinky. What we're trying to do here is dirty it down, pull all the colors together, and really make it kind of that unified um, tone. Washes are great for that. But you can see, so here we are. Now, if you wanted a quick battle ready army, you could stop at this point. There'd be no problem with that whatsoever. But we're just going to take it to the next level and go back over basically every area with the same colours we've used. You can see here on the foot and on the uh, lower armour panel, I'm not covering every single part of the armour. I'm leaving some of that uh, showing through. Um, and I'm going to different degrees in, in all different armour panels. So some I'll go quite close to the edge, some I'll leave a patch of brown showing through. Really adds to that mucky, dirty effect that works really well with um, Death Guard. 
So I'm just showing you a really close up of the palette here. You can see how there's the sort of blob of paint that makes sense. So when I'm painting, I don't dip it straight into the blob. I take some of the paint from the very edge, pull it onto the wet palette. And because it's been there for a while as well, because we're going back over, it puts a bit of paint into the, the bristles, but not too much. And it is a little watery. So that when you're painting it on the panels like here, you can spread this around and it will give different levels of opacity onto the armor panel and give quite a nice multi-tone effect. Just thought I'd show that one as a bit of interest. Now onto the bone, same thing. We're doing the same principle, uh, painting the bone color onto where all the, well here in claws sticking out. And again, you want to leave areas near the armor panels where it looks like shade and highlighting and the bits in between the claws, make sure you don't get uh, any onto there. And what that'll do, even though you've only used one color, it now looks like there are three, four, five even tones on this model because you're not putting completely uh, the same coverage of paint all over. There's different opacity levels from the paint because you're taking it off that wet palette. It's got a bit of water in it. You're not dipping it right into the section of the paint that's going to be fairly thorough. Now I'm going to whiz through the tentacles here because we've done quite a bit onto the wet blending effect. But all we're doing now is going into tentacles, working on each one, one by one, and just uh, again doing that same wet blending effect on there. Working on the straps here, you can see already where the uh, leather is on this strap. It looks like there's two or three colours on there already just from the brown leather and the wash. And remembering that when we painted everything on here onto the like the armour gaps and things you can see, we didn't really cover 100% of all the paint. We left some of that bronze showing through, which was then covered by the mucky wash and just give lots of different nice tones. You can also see, I didn't mention when I painted the yellow before, all the armour bits where it looks like someone's been hit by a shot, I've put some yellow into those as well um, for the later effect. Now, dropping a little bit of black back on to the weaponry and some of the cables. I like black demonic weapons, you can see there as well, there's lots of the yellow piece put in. The thing I didn't mention before, quickly painted the cable going into his, his side yellow as well. Now onto the smoke, I'm not covering very much of this at all, I'm just putting some onto the very, very raised edges. I quite like how it looks with that yellow and grey in. Now before we uh, finish the model off, using the paint we've not used before, now this is Nylac Oxide. I just want to put this onto some of the brass areas, particularly the kind of really nice chest pieces these models have got. Just gives a nice aged brass effect. Just painted it onto a couple of the little nicks and dinks that are on there. You could go to town and put this in loads of places. I'm just keeping it very kind of restrained. Putting it around some of the bolts and rivets that are on the particular the big, big brass panels on the armour. Now I'm not going to every rivet by any means. Just it adds a little bit of nice extra tone in and just gives that very nice aged brass effect. Pretty nice technical paint. I said before about the bases. So in this process off camera, I've kind of been doing the bases for these models to go on. I have got a full uh, tutorial on desk guard bases, which I'll link down below if you want to see it. So now I'm breaking them off the test bases or the paint bases I've been using. And I'm just going to glue them down onto their final bases. Another point to note with Feltheus, he needs to be on a 50 mil base to be a Lord of Contagion. And he comes with a 40. So you'll have to pick yourself up an extra base somewhere. Now Nurgle's rot. Um, if you can do a Death Guard army without using this paint, you're a braver person than I am. This is the absolute essential Death Guard paint. And I'm now just covering all the yellow areas with this. A few little drops on the base and all the yellow areas and all the armor panel dents and some of the pustules and just go to town with it. You can go bonkers with this. I keep it just to the areas I've painted yellow where it's meant to be dripping gore and just into the areas where the armor panels are damaged. And that's the paint scheme. So here it is fitting in with my other uh, Terminator unit. Works really nicely, fits in really well. If you enjoyed that, like, comment, subscribe. Check me out on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll see you next time.